with your son uh, that we may have the right to everlasting and eternal life what an amazing god we serve what an awesome god we serve what a wonderful savior uh, we Thank serve good morning good morning hope well and friends of the well and welcome to hope at home resurrection sunday 2020 redeemed 2020 we're so glad um, that you have tuned in today um, as we celebrate one of the greatest days ever and that is the resurrection of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. He died. He was buried. But thank God that he got up early one Sunday morning. Not yes. just got up, yes. but he got up with all power in his hands. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior. Amen. And because he lives, we can be able to face tomorrow. All fear is gone because he lives. So do me a favor. As we get ready to go into the Word of God this morning, go ahead and share this. Go ahead and tag people in this. Somebody may see be sleeping, go ahead and tag them anyway. Maybe the notification will go off and they'll get up, amen, and be on time for church, amen, as we bring you hope at home to your homes. We're so grateful, we're so thankful um, that you have tuned in this morning because you could be anywhere else, but we're so glad that you are watching the Hope Well Experience from your home. In fact, if you're not in Illinois, go ahead and come in, in the comments section and let us know where you're tuning in live from. We would love to connect with you again. We're so grateful, so thankful that you have invited us in your home today. Day, um, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know I won't be able to hear you clap, but can you just give can you just give God praise for my dynamic music ministry? Amen. They have been singing their hearts out every week, and I thank God for them. Our media team, our office staff, our trustees, they've been allowing, they've been helping uh, for this to be the Hope World experience. Without them, there would be no Hope World experience. But I thank God for them. I really do. I told them a few weeks ago, amen. Once this is all over and we're back, amen. To some type of normalcy of life. We're taking a trip. Amen. So they got to be praying and fasting now that God makes provision. Amen. For us to go to Hawaii, Jamaica, or something like that. Amen. They got to pray and fast. Amen. For God to open up the door and make the way. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Just two verses I want to look at. Amen. This morning. 1 Peter chapter 1, um, verses 18 and 19. 1 Peter 1. 18 and 19. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. I switched it up on you this morning. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Amen. So it may sound a, sound a little different. Amen. I switched it up just a little bit. Amen. And went to the New King James Version of the Bible. And it reads as this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by generations from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Let me read that again because this is good news for us, for the body of Christ today. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold that will, that will, be, that will corrupt, that, that, that will corrupt, that will have an end to it, that will no longer have any value from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers. He says, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you once again for the body. We thank, we thank you once again for the blood. We thank you once again for the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that died that we may have the right to, eat, to everlasting life, that died that we could be redeemed, that died so that we could be justified, that died so that we could be able to have a new life, a new life, not in ourselves, not in the world systems, but to be able to have a new life in Christ. We thank you, oh God, for for sacrificing your only son and we thank God for our Savior Jesus Christ for being willing to take on the weight of our sins he who knew, who knew no sin became sin that we could become the righteousness of God so bless us now as we go into your word, Lord God. I pray that we are already anticipating and ready to see how we need to respond to your word through obedience and action. So thank you now. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Now, all over the world, all over the world for the body of Christ, this whole week has been a week of reflection. 
a week that we call Holy Week, that we began to celebrate, we began to reflect, we began to recognize, we began to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know we get excited about Sunday, we get, we get pumped about Sunday, about him being the resurrected Savior, him to be the one that would take away the sins of the world, but if there was no Holy Week, there would be no Sunday. So we take the whole time, we take the whole time of the week just to begin to reflect upon the sacrifice, the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Really, we can really call this not only Holy Week, but we can call this the week of love because Jesus shows us love in action this entire week. He showed us love in action by everything that he did, by carrying his own cross, going up, uh, going up to the going up to Calvary's cross with nails in his hands and nails in his feet and the crown of thorns on his head. And even while he's there on the cross, I love it. Even while he's there on the cross, Jesus is so concerned about it us that he begins to mumble out seven last words seven last words I love it because the first few words that Jesus gives he talks about forgiveness he talks about woman behold your son son behold your mother he talks about the salvation today you will be with me in paragraphs as he being be with me in paragraph paradise as he stood between two things who were worthy of death but here it is you have this perfect sinless man who has done nothing at all that is that is that is on the cross between two thieves. Uh -huh. The first few words that Jesus shares there from the cross, I love it because it's so intentional in what he does. As he's there on the cross, he is concerned about everybody else. He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus, what do you mean forgive them for they know not what you do? Did you not realize they have been casting light on your clothes? Did you not realize they have taken the nails and have intentionally hammered them into your hands? Did you not realize they put the thorn of crowns on your head and they pressed them into your skull and all this blood streaming down your face. Jesus, what do you mean? Forgive them for they know not what they do. They know exactly what you're doing. But Jesus teaches us there from the cross. He uses the cross, I love this part, as his pulpit to be able to teach us and to show us what it means to really forgive. Oh, that's a good word right there. I can stay right there and preach all day long, but you might turn to another one. So I want you to stay right there for a moment. He teaches us how to forgive, but then he looks over the second word. He looks over to the man on the other side of him and he tells him today you will be with me in paradise. I love it because once again Jesus uses the cross as his pulpit. He uses okay. the cross as his sanctuary. He uses the cross. He uses Calvary's cross as a place to be able to open up the doors of the church and there's nobody up front to receive them. There's nobody to be able to call their name out. There's no one to take them to the back to get information and get them ready for baptism there is no one to tarry with them at the altar. He tells them today you will be with me in paradise. Hold up. Wait a minute Pastor Swift. You just said that Jesus is here on the cross every time, every time he mumbles a word. It is literally taking away breath from his body. It is literally, literally taking away his life. But he mumbles these words out and he offers this man salvation by saying not after you complete new membership class not after you get the right hand of fellowship from the deacons. He says, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus there on the cross once again. He looks down at his mother. The Bible says that his mother did not even recognize her son as he was on the way to Calvary's cross. Had no idea who he was because of how distorted his body has been. The pressure that his body is under during this time. Didn't even recognize him. But Jesus recognizes his mother and he says, woman, now you have to understand, I know, I know I would never just call my mom and say, hey, woman, what you doing? I might get in trouble. And that might be the quickest trip my mom made from Chicago down to Carbondale to get me. So I don't, I, I advise you, sons, daughters, don't try because I don't know what the end may be like for you. But he looks at her, not in the way of disrespect, but he looks at her as a place of concern and says, woman, behold your son. And looks at his disciples and says, son, behold your mother. Right there in that moment, Jesus from the, from Calvary's cross with thorns on his head, with nails in his hand, with nails in his feet. He makes sure to let his mother know that even as I'm dying, I'm making sure that you have care. I'm making sure that you have provision. I'm making sure that you are well taken care of. Here it is, thanks to God. Here's a lesson for us. If Jesus 
is able to guarantee the best stimulus package for his mother from Calvary's cross. How much more can he do for us? How much more can he provide for us? How many other ways can he prove for us how that he's able to take care of us now that he is the risen Savior and he got up from the grave with all power in his hands? Jesus gets to this next word and he makes it personal. He says, Father, he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, th- 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 this troubles me when Jesus says this because he, he asks this question of his father. Uh, 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 and notice here, he does not say Abba. He does not say God. He says, my God, my God, why? He does not say Father. He says, my God, my God, why mm-hmm. hast thou forsaken me? For the first time ever in that relationship, his father turns his back on him. Jesus knows what it's like to feel abandoned. Jesus knows what it's like to feel rejected. Jesus knows what it's like to keep calling and you don't get a response. Jesus knows what it's like to to continue to text and never get a reply back. Even though you've read the thread and you see they read your message. Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God forsook his son Jesus on Calvary's cross so that he would never have to forsake you and I now. He turned his back on his son because his son represented sin. He took all the sins of the world. And his father couldn't stand to see something that was so dirty, that was so nasty, so unholy. He turns his back. The Bible says that while he's there on the cross getting ready to give this next word, that darkness is all over. The lamb, a pastor growing up used to say, the sun refused to shine. Come on, preach it. Darkness all over the world. And Jesus lets out those words. So this week for us as believers, I mean, we walk through these seven sayings. We, as we walk through this, begin to reflect and begin to apply it to our lives. It is, it is a week of reflection. It is, it is a week of remembering. Please, thanks of God, don't rush to Sunday to be able to shout that he got up from the grave with all power in his hands. And you don't stop by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and get all the way to Sunday. We, we need the whole, we need the whole entire week yes. to get in full context to right. remind us of what our Savior has done for us. Jesus came with the plan to be able to redeem us. Yes, he did. God knew that I have to set up a plan. My children from the days of Adam have gotten, have gotten caught up and have gotten tangled up in this thing called sin. Now we're no longer walking in perfect fellowship. We're no longer walking in perfect harmony. Now there is a disconnect between me and my sons and my daughters. Yeah. And I have to find a way to be able to get this connection back. You all you all know if you had internet, that's, that, that, that's nothing worse for you than to be able to have bad connection. You will, you will find yourself running all over the the house trying to find the perfect spot right, to be right. able to get the right connection. You will pay. You will pay for the best package to make sure that you are never without connection. You will do whatever it is. It is within your power to make sure that you are always connected because one disconnect can mess up a DM. One, one disconnect can really just ruin your whole entire life. One disconnect can really turn some things out. One disconnect can have your, your phone bill, your light bill turned off if you're not able to pay it online right away wait because you waited to the last minute to be able to pay it because you were still waiting on your stimulus check and you still ain't got it yet. And so one disconnect can really change the entire course of your life. And God says, I need a plan to be able to bring my children back in the right relationship with me. So I need someone that can be their redeemer. I need someone that can be able to redeem them. Here it is. Let me give you this definition that Walter Elwell gives. I love this definition that he gives about redemption. He says that redemption is going to be on the screens in just a second. Redemption means to free someone from bondage. Uh-huh. It often involves paying the pain. It often involves the pain of a ransom, a price that makes redemption possible. Mm. God uh, 
in his own sovereignty, but in his own will, said, I need to find, I got to find, I got to find, I got to find, I got to get together this perfect plan because I see, <coughs> I see, don't worry, it's just allergies, don't worry, it's just allergies. Uh, he, he sees that my, my sons, my daughters, they are, they are disconnected from me, and I, I don't want to be able to walk in perfect fellowship with them. I want to be able to walk in perfect harmony with them, and so I have to Provides a plan to be able to get them back. And he says, hey, I got it. I understand now. I'm going to use my son, my, my one, my only son, my, my son who is sinless, my son that will enter into this world through a virgin by the name of Mary and that he will take on the sins of the world. He will be the one to be able to redeem them. He will be the one that will be able to free them. Free us from what? Free us from the bondage of sin. I know, I know, I know, I know you've been in church all your life. I know you've dotted every I. I know you've crossed every T. You don't miss church at all. Amen. You're In fact, you're just up now, like it's Sunday morning. Amen. Because you just do everything the right way. You you live according to what the Word of God says. You don't miss a beat at all. But for some of us, we have gotten tangled up in sin. We have allowed, we have allowed the passions of our heart to lead us into some areas, amen, that it really could just destroy our lives. We have allowed, we have allowed the lust of our flesh to cause us to long after some things that have become idols in our lives. Jesus says, I, I, I need to, God says, I need to redeem them from the bondage of sin. I know, I know, I know. Here it is. Let's be honest this morning. I'm not looking at you, but you're looking at me. So let's be honest this morning. Sin is very enticing. Yes, let's, be, let's be honest. Sin is good. If it, if it was not good, if it was not enjoyable, you wouldn't be, wouldn't be so quick to run to it. And because of that, because it is so enticing, because it is so good, because it is so satisfying, it has gotten us caught in bondage that we need someone to be able yes, sir. to get us out, to free us. free us. And so now, in order for him to be able to redeem us, it, 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 it involves the pain of a ransom. It comes with a price so that you and I could be able to be free. Look at yes. this, y'all. I, I told you, this is not just oh, Holy Week, but this is also, this, this was also a love week. It was the week of love displaying to us and showing us how valuable we are in the eye of God. Thank you, God. He put together the best plan, the best salvation plan ever with no monthly payments. Amen. Put together the best plan ever to, in order to secure us in our relationship, to secure our salvation with him Thank so that God. we would not have to come to the temple anymore, come to the altar with bulls and lambs and goats and order to make a sacrifice, but that we have now direct access to yes. Jesus Christ. Somebody might be asking a question, but Pastor Swims, what have we been redeemed from? You're talking about us being redeemed. You're talking about this price. You're talking about freeing us from bondage. But what is it that we have been redeemed from? That we have been redeemed from the penalty of sin. The Bible says, I believe over in Romans, that, 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 that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin is death. There is a price to pay for sin. Yes. <laughs> I know, I know, I just said. Pastor, you just said that sin is enticing. You just said that sin is enjoyable. You're absolutely right. But sin also brings a disruption in our relationship with the Savior. Sin also brings a, uh, brings a disconnect in our relationship with God. And because sin has the power to be able to do that, and because the penalty of sin is death, not just any death, our death. Jesus says, God says, I need to redeem them. From the penalty of death, I, 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 need, I need to redeem them so they can stop coming with, 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 with lambs and goats and bulls. I need to redeem them so yes. that this thing can be taken care of once and for all. I need them to be able to experience new life. I need them right. to begin to experience new life, not just any type of life, but new life in me. I need them to realize what love really is. I yes. need them to know what joy really is. I need them to know what care really is. I need them to know what provision really looks like. I need them to know what protection really looks like. I need them to experience a God type of living now, not just when they get the glory. But I need them to experience real life here on earth. So I need to redeem them from the penalty of sin. 
And not only, not only, not only did he redeem us from the penalty of sin, but get this, you all, this is so good. He also redeemed us from the guilt of sin. Hey, here, here's, here's what sin does not tell you. Sin will offer a great commercial. Sin, I mean, will let you know it will almost be like those, it will almost be like those ads that you get on social media. I mean, you just Google, hey, I want to go to Jamaica. And the next thing you know, all the ads on Facebook, all the ads on Instagram right, right. is about Jamaica and just showing you how beautiful it is, showing you what a good time that you can have, but it never lets you know the total cost of what you're going to have to pay in order to be able to get there. Right. And sin is the same way. It will entice you. It will lure you in. It will say all the good things. Yeah. It will smell all the right ways, but never tell you what you will have to give up in order to be able to enjoy. It won't right. tell you the consequences that you will have to pay well. for your sins. And if you're like me, we all, if you're like me, I've done some things that I have not been proud of. I've said some things that I have not been proud of. I behaved in some ways that I have not been proud of. And because, and before I even know it, I know that I've been redeemed. I know he has brought me back to himself. I know that he wants to bring me in right relationship with him, back into right relationship with him. But if I'm not careful, I will begin to believe the lies of the enemy more than I believe the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Right. I'm not careful. If I'm not careful. I'm not careful. The, 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 the roaring of the enemy will be loud in my ear. How could you do that again? Yeah. <laughs> How did you fall for the okie doke again? I just knew you wasn't strong enough. I just knew this wasn't going to work. You're so dumb. You're so, you're so stupid. We will begin to believe the lies of the enemy that will cause us to fall yeah. into the trap of guilt. And let me tell you something, saints of God, there is nothing worse than guilt because guilt will grip your heart. You won't lift your hands to worship because you'll feel like you're not worthy. You won't come to church because you won't feel like you're not worthy. You won't even pray to God because you don't feel like you're not worthy. But I came to break the back of the enemy's voice in your ear to let you know that no matter what you have done, no matter what you have said, no matter how life, how, how you have done life. There is room at the cross for you. He will forgive you of your sins. He will forgive you of your sins. He will forgive you of your sins and he will give you new life in him. So let today be your own personal resurrection where you take off the clothes of guilt. You take off the clothes of shame and say, devil, not another moment. I know I'm quarantined in the house right now, but I'm not going to allow your voice to override what the blood has already done for me. When the enemy comes in and saying all types of stuff, you just remind the devil, I got the blood over me. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. You don't have to walk in guilt. You don't have to walk in shame. You don't have to walk in guilt of your sin. You are not what you've done. I know you made a bad move. I know you made a bad decision, but you are not your bad decision. You are not your bad move. You are a child of God. You are the righteousness of God. I don't have to walk in the guilt of sin. Let me just say right there for a little bit longer. You don't, you don't have to walk in the guilt of sin. I know, I know you've done some things that nobody else know about you. You just whispered to prayer and God, you got it in your journal that's way, way back, back, way, 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 way back in the back so that no one can ever find it until you die and you still hold on to it. There's still a little bit of grip, a little bit of guilt that grips your heart every now and then. There may be something that comes up in your Facebook memory that will send you right back down. I came to let you know, Jesus died so that you would not have to walk in shame and guilt. Pastor Swims, you don't know what I've done. You're absolutely right. I don't know what you've done, nor do I need to know. But what I do know is, is that Jesus covered all of your sins, your, your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins at the cross. Oh, well, Pastor, are you telling me since he's covered everything, now am I free to do what I want to do? No, 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 no. Paul said, Paul asked the question, he said, just because, just because we more grace abound, do we continue to sin? Absolutely not. But this, it is, it is my hope now that I can hang on to what he has said in his word and the promises that he has made 
So I don't have to walk with my head down low. I can, I can walk with my head up high. I, I can say, I can say I am loved by God, even being rejected by others and, and being and being left alone from others. I can still say, I am his own. He, he calls me his son. He, he calls me his daughter. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Redemption not only, not only brings us. Redeems us from the penalty of sin and the guilt of sin. But redemption brings freedom. Yes. <laughs> I know, I yes. know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know what you're saying. Well, Pastor, I don't get it. I don't understand. Redemption brings freedom. Okay, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Let me, let me, let me take it back to you so that you can be able to understand. If you ever saw the movie Harriet, Harriet, about Harriet Tubman and how uh, she, they called her the Black Moses. She was one um, that would free people. She was one that she escaped the slave master's house and she was able to go into another state and be able to enjoy the freedom now that she had as a free woman. But she realized this is not just good for me to be free. She would take the long journey by foot by foot. There was no Uber. There was no lift. There was no airplane she could be able to take to go back home to free everybody else. She went by foot, taking days, weeks to be able to get there. But it was not just good enough for her to experience freedom on a Just give me a second. We're going to be back on in a minute. What she would do was she would go back home. She would go back home. And when she would get there, she already had a plan of how she was going to take some people and lead them to freedom. Here the thing was, when they got to freedom and they had their papers, their papers now were signed, letting everybody know that they were no longer the slave to their previous master, but because they have stepped over into a new state, because they have stepped over into a new life. Now they were free. Can I tell you something that happened for you and I over 2,000 years ago? There was a man by the name of Jesus that signed the Emancipation Proclamation for our lives to free us not just, not, 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 not to, to free us forever, not something that has to be made payments every month, but he freed us forever so that we can be able to walk in freedom. We can be able to talk in freedom. We can be able to worship in freedom. We can be able to act in freedom because of what he did for us. Thank you, God. Redemption brings about freedom. You don't know real freedom until you have experienced the freedom of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You don't know what real freedom is to be able to know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the sin that I've done. I don't have to walk in guilt. Right. I don't have to walk in shame. When you realize the freedom that we have because of this son, now you can start living your best life. Doesn't matter how people want to remind you. I remember when, you know what, I absolutely do too. But now I am a new creature. All things have passed away. Yes. <laughs> and behold, all things Thank you, God. are now new. I like verse 19 of 1 Peter because it says, before we get to verse 19, I, I, I like the early part of verse 18. It says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. I, I, I like that part because it lets us know that there are some things you can be able to buy. <laughs> There are some things where your money is going to be good. There are some things you can be able to swipe your car. There, there are some things you can be able to Apple Pay. There, there are some things you can be able to pay checks with. But salvation is not a one of them. Right. Jesus says, Jesus says, listen, you are not able to buy this. You are not able to use your silver and your gold to be able to buy this because those things are corruptible. They will, they will lose value. They, right. will, they will rust. They will come right. to an end. He says, but what I am going to do, I know you've been living aimless. I know you've been living recklessly. You, you've taken on the same mindset. You've taken on the same behaviors of your forefathers before you. He said, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay for this thing with something that's more precious than silver, more precious than gold. I'm going to use the blood, the precious blood of Christ as a lamb or without blemish and without spot. But, oh, wait, 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 Pastor. Okay, you just said, you just said that you just said that the precious blood of Christ it's more valuable than silver and gold. You just said the precious blood of Christ is more valuable than my debit card. You just said that you, 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 you just said that the precious blood of Christ is more valuable than your black credit card. You just said that the precious blood of Christ is more valuable 
than silver and gold? Absolutely, because you have to understand, you have to understand, back in the Old Testament, the Levit the, back in the Levitical law, it was stated that whenever you bought a sacrifice, you could not just bring any old type of goat. You could not just bring any old type of bull. You could not just bring any old type of sheep. You had to bring, you had to bring the best of the best. Whatever it was that you bought as a sacrifice could not have any deformities. Whatever you bought as a sacrifice could not be with any blemishes. Whatever you bought with the sacrifice, had to be without spot. It had to be perfect in order for it to be accepted. God says, okay, I got to get this plan together. I got to get this plan together. How, how am I going to free my children? How am I going to be able to bring this relationship back? How am I going to be able to walk with them again in harmony? How am I going to be able to walk with them again in great fellowship? How am I going to be able to bring them back? How am I going to be able to bring them back into right standing with me? I need the perfect sacrifice. I need, I need, I need, I need the sacrifice that I make. I need whatever it is. It has to be perfect. It has to be sinless. So God thought, okay, my son, who came down and was birthed through a virgin by the name of Mary, I, who, who, who knew no sin. Corinthians says this, he, he knew no sin but became sin yes. for you and I yes. that we yes. might be called the righteousness of God. Perfect lamb he was. Yes. Perfect sacrifice he was. Because get this, if Jesus was not the perfect sacrifice, mm -hmm. he never would have been able to deliver us and redeem oh, us. If I'm stuck in a ditch and you're stuck in a ditch, we can't look to each other to get us out the ditch. Right. We need somebody that's outside of the ditch that can be able to get us both out. Right. If Jesus had not been the perfect sacrifice, his blood would not have meant nothing at all. But because he was the perfect sacrifice, never sinned. Never had an evil desire in his heart. Mm -hmm. Never lusted, never lied, never cheated. Lord, thank you. He was the perfect sacrifice. Yes, he was. That was without blemish, that was without spot. That could be able to save us you, from our sin. When you look back in the Old Testament, it talks about the blood. And you look back over in the Exodus, and it says when you have the blood of the doorpost, that the death angel is going to pass over. It was foreshadowing the, the Lamb of Christ, the Lamb of God, the, 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 the once and for all sacrifice that will be made for you and I. Do you see how valuable you are? Do you see how loved you are? Do you see how amazing you are in the eyes of your heavenly father? God would not have given his son for junk. God would not have sacrificed his only son just for nothing. Story is sort of a preacher. He's at the store. See the young man that's coming his way has some birds in a cage. And mm -hmm. He's trying to sell the birds. Preacher say, "Okay, I give you a dollar for the birds." Say, oh no, nah, man, you don't want to. You don't want these birds. They ain't worth nothing. They can't sing. They can't hum. They can't do nothing. They can barely fight. They can't. They can't do nothing. The preacher, say, I give you two dollars for them. He said, "You want to give me two dollars?" For these birds that are useless, I told you they can't sing, they can't hum, they can't do nothing. But if you're willing to give me $2, I'll take your money and I will give you these birds and I'll throw in the cages for free. The preacher, knowing what the man said, gives him the $2 and he takes the birds and the cages. Goes in the back of the church, opens up the gate, mm. and for the first time, these birds race to get out the gate and began to fly. 
What if that man had went, what if that preacher had went with what that man said? Ah, oh, yeah, you're right. I, I don't want to waste my $2 on something that's worthless. I, I, I don't want to sacrifice my money for something that can't fly. They can't, oh, you mean they, they can't do, they can't fly, they can't hum, they can't sing, they can't do, they can't chirp? Bought them anyway. And when he bought them, it sealed the deal for their freedom. When he opened up the cage, they were able to soar. They were able to fly. They were able to live life, something they had never been able to do before. But they were just stuck in the cage. There's some of you right now watching. You said, Pastor, you talking to me. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this cage. I'm stuck in the cage of the world systems. I'm stuck in the cage of religion. But I got good news for you. Your emancipator desires to set you free. Yes, you, you free today. He wants to set you free today. But he wants to be the preacher that buys the birds with the cage and opens up the cage. And now you can be able to soar. Now you can be able to fly. Because you're free. You're free. Thank you, God. You're free from the penalty of death. You, you, you're free from the penalty of sin. You're, you're, you're free from the guilt of sin. Now you have freedom in Christ Jesus. Well, Pastor, how do I apply this message to my life? How do I make this make sense? Two ways. If you don't know him, you need to commit your life to him today. Let me ask you this question. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting for? How many more ways does Jesus need to prove to you that you need him in your life? How many times does he, does he have to divinely and supernaturally show up in your life for you to be able to understand? I, I, I don't have enough to be able to run my own life. I don't know enough. I can't do enough. Many would say, well, I got to get myself together. If we were able to get ourselves together, then Jesus dying on the cross was in vain. Yes. You and I are not able to get ourselves out of the ditch of sin, but we need someone that's bigger than us. We need someone that's more powerful than us to get us out of what we're in. If you don't know him, this is real simple. You don't, you're, you're, right where you are can become your altar. Right where you are in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you are can become your altar and you can ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. You can say, I confess my sins. I believe in my heart. I'm tired of doing, doing life on my own. If that's you, Salvation can be yours today. Just like he told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. And here it is. You have more of a greater benefit because that, 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 that thief on the cross is getting ready to die right then. You're still living and breathing right now. Why not ask him into your heart? Why not ask him into your life right now? If that's you, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to email your name. I want you to email uh, um, your contact information to prayer team at hopewellmb.org. Email your information to prayer team at hopewellmb.org. Second way to be able to apply this thing to your life, if, 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 if you are already saved, already blood washed, but every now and then you like to dip out, 
every now and then you want to live double lives. You want to you want to you want to act holy in church, but then you want to live how you want to live Monday through Saturday. Let me challenge you to recommit your life to him today. He's able to forgive you of your sins. There was no sin too big. There was no sin too large that he can't forgive you of. Recommit your life to him today. Re I'm not asking you to recommit your life to the church. I'm not asking you to recomm recommit your life to a building, but recommit your life to him. Give him your heart again. Tell him yes again. And watch and see what he'll do. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. He give you grace. He give you mercy. Let it be new every morning. It's yours, but just give him your life. Recommit your life to him today. Don't wait. Don't delay it. But recommit your life to him today. If that's you, if you want to recommit your life, if that's you that you desire prayer. Once again, email your information to prayer team at hopeboatmb.org. Someone from our prayer team will get in contact with you. They'll pray with you. They'll lead you to the Lord. Don't miss this moment. Don't let this Resurrection Sunday pass you by that you don't. Give yourself to Him. You've been redeemed. You've been, you've been bought with the price. And it's been paid in full. Let me pray with you this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for these, your people right now. God, I thank you for the one that's watching right now. I thank you for the one that's viewing right now, God. You know where they are, God. The one that's far away from you. The one that does not know you. But there's something going on on the inside, Lord. That's a tugging this. Wanting to say yes, wanting to know more about them. Realizing they need a savior. Realize they need a redeemer to buy them back. Do you dare believe the lies of the enemy? You're not useless, you're not worthless, you're worth something. If you wasn't, he wouldn't have died. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that salvation can be, though, can be theirs today. I pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus for the one, Lord God, they know church. They know church lingo. They know church protocol, Father God, but they've strayed away from you. They know religion, but they don't know relationship, God. I pray that you would tighten their relationship. Help them to recommit their lives to you today. Their desire, their heart's aim and desire should be to please you. In all that we do. Thank you for your perfect sacrifice. Thank you for taking our place. And because you have delivered us, because you have redeemed us, we're never going back. But we're only moving forward. There's grace for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The secret sins that no one knows about, there's grace for you. There's, there's forgiveness for you. He knows it and still loves you. He heard it and still loves you. He, he, he's seen it and still loves you. Why not? Why not make him your savior today? If you want to be saved, if you desire prayer, if you want to become a part of our church family, email us at prayerteam at hopewellmb.org. Email us. We want, to, we want to pray with you. We want to connect with you. I'm not just saying that just